Hi there, this is Chuck Brzezanski from Mile High Comics, and this is the second in my series of video newsletters about the San Diego Comic Con. My first newsletter was actually at the convention, or excuse me, it was at our Jason Street store. Now we're actually in the convention hall, and as you can see, looking down the aisle, this looks like a very large convention, except of course for the fact that this is only 20% of the convention. There's 80% of the convention yet behind us here, and it goes on longer than you can possibly believe. Now, I wanted you to see this end of the building first, where we are, because this is the comic book ghetto. This is where those of us who are survivors from the original San Diego Comic-Con are housed. And that is an increasingly smaller population every year. We're almost set up. As we go down the aisles here, I think you're going to see that the other booths are not set up quite in the same way. So where we're going to right now will be down the main aisle of the convention. And the significance of this, and I have to be kind of careful about what I say because I can't say it in the aisle down there itself, is that you'll be seeing where the very large, oftentimes multi-billion dollar corporations have moved into San Diego Comic Con and are basically treating it as their oyster. Um, they come in here, the, the truck that was in front of our truck coming in in the loading dock was a truck filled with toys for Hasbro, I believe. And they're coming in here with the intention of selling hundreds of thousands of dollars of their toys direct to consumer, thus bypassing their own distribution system and bypassing their own retailers. Now, if their retailers are companies like Toys R Us and Walmart, I don't really give a damn. But when companies like Dark Horse and DC come in here with the intention of bypassing their own retailers, that bothers me. Because we're supposed to have a symbiotic relationship with these folks, and they're taking full advantage of that symbiosis by expecting us to promote their goods. But when they get a chance to sell things that we can't have, they're very happy to do so. And that was the reason that I gave last year for my really thinking about not ever coming back to this show. Now, we've come up with some solutions to that problem, but I just wanted to kind of give you a sense of what they're doing down there in the big aisle. So, we'll take you away from the comic book ghetto now and walk down into halls D, E, and F, which are much more of the media halls. Okay, we are now in the main aisle of the convention. And every year, and I'll be doing this this year in one of my videos, I walk this aisle around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock on Saturday just to get a feel for what's happening at the convention. And those kinds of epiphanies and insights that I get this year, I'll be passing right on to you in one of these video newsletters. Um, but where we are right now, um, DC Comics is on one side of us here, and uh, Sideshow Collectibles is here on the other side. Sideshow has all of their exclusives uh, still covered up so you really can't see them. But just their, their Terminator here is pretty awesome. Um, I always like coming by Sideshow because they have really, really great stuff. Um, the thing is though is that they're not trying to sell direct to consumer and you have companies like DC that do not sell direct to consumer, but what they do is they sell everything through a front company, in this case Graffiti, um, that then sells all their exclusives for them, and then they split the money with Graffiti, um, thus shutting out all their other retailers. Um, and DC wonders why their market share is dropping amongst comic stores. Um, we really don't feel a huge amount of loyalty to DC right now. Unlike Marvel, DC does not cut us in on any kind of ability to do exclusives on their comics. I cannot do a Mile High's uh, Superman or Wonder Woman or, or Joker or, or Harley Quinn um, because they simply will not let us do it. Marvel, on the other hand, we have to pay them $10,000 each, but they will. And at least that door is open, and it's open to anyone. I believe there were 64 different Star Wars number one variants because that many retailers agreed to pay in. Now that was a paycheck for Marvel, but it's also a question of fairness and equity. Marvel has a dollar amount that you have to pay to do a variant, 
and you have to come up with a cover concept that they'll allow, but they're not averse to letting anybody do it. Um, the door here at DC is closed, and as we go further down the aisle and we get to Dark Horse, Dark Horse lets no one in, and they just flat out sell everything themselves. So we'll walk down in that direction right now. Right now, we're very near the Marvel Comics booth, and uh, I just noticed that Marvel has got several pallets of different kinds of comics. But one of the things that they're doing this year is they're giving away free comic book day Avengers issues. And that's something that we certainly can't complain about. I mean, that's really great. Giving out free comic book day books, extras that they have at San Diego Comic Con. That's the way it should be. I really, I, to me, that's just absolutely wonderful. Now, if they created variants that they're selling themselves, okay, fine. Because quite literally, any title that I wanted to create a variant on, Marvel would let me do so. And I think that's really wonderful. But when we go down here to Dark Horse, you'll see that they actually set up a store specifically to compete with their own retailers. Okay, so as I said earlier, we're going to be coming up here on Dark Horse, and Dark Horse actually, I mean, they make no bones about it. They want to compete with their own retailers. They can't. They seem to have kind of blurred the line between being a publisher and a retailer, and I sometimes get the impression that if they could just not deal with us pesky retailers at all, they'd be just as happy, um, because it's like they very much like having all of the dollars from a given product in their own pocket. And if you take a look here, they, they make no bones about it. Now, for those of you who are comics fans and you say to yourself, well, gee, I like having a store in my hometown. Um, you know, Dark Horse varies anywhere from 5 to 10% of market share in a given month. And uh, they are more than willing to cut out your local retailer and sell things themselves. I don't want to make them the poster child for this because there's lots of other companies that are doing it here in the building. Um, but this really setting up a store where it's only products that their own retailers cannot purchase, um, to me that seems a little bit much. So, and then when we're across the aisle and we're dealing with image and particularly Top Cow is kind of egregious with this also this is limited edition row. Now, if you're a comic fan and you want to support this kind of behavior, come on to San Diego Comic Con because you can certainly pick up more than enough exclusives here to make your heart go kitty cat. And then the trouble is, is that then people say, well, gee, Chuck, why aren't you able to make any money at the convention when you're selling the bread and butter books while they have all the exclusives? Um, it does make it hard. Okay, I'm going to close out today's video before uh, me and my cameraman, Chris, get killed here uh, by all the different parts and hand trucks and God knows what, because um, these people have brought so much crap in here that... Uh, they can't even get their boots done. Just take a look down this aisle. We're at the 2900 aisle. I think it goes to 4700. Um, there, there's no way, if you're a fan, that San Diego Con isn't magical and isn't wonderful. I do think, and I'll go more into this in our next episode, which will be tomorrow. I do think that Mile High is going to do well. I think that we're going to survive this year. I'm extremely optimistic about the show, and I think that the show has a heart to it that you really have to be here, you have to see it, you have to feel it. The San Diego Con There's is no something way I'll that, that supersedes anything else in the business. All the other conventions, no matter how good they are, are wannabes. They all wish they were San Diego. And so this is, this is the true heart of the comics world. I have my problems with some things that go on here, but I really do like an awful lot that happens here too. And I, I don't want to ever miss this. So I'll, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Thank you very much. This is Chuck Wazanski, Mile High Comics from the wonderful San Diego Comic.